Does anyone here have teenagers? Have you ever tried to speak to them about sex? I remember trying to speak to my teenage daughter and all I got was the hand. Mum, no, don't. I, want, I don't want to talk about it. Did you know that in Australia, an estimated 70% of boys have seen porn by the time they're 12? And 100% by the time they're 15. Porn has become the global education handbook for many boys, according to Melinda Tankard Rice. And if there's no other loving alternative, where are they to go? The fact that porn is so available on the internet, not to mention what we absorb through the media, means that we as adults and our children are exposed more than ever in history to a sexuality that does little to honour the human form, let alone put an expectation of how sex is onto young minds. Steve Bidolf is an Australian psychologist and leading author on raising boys and girls. He says that in 20, 30 years ago, in his earlier years of practice, he would see a handful of girls showing the obvious signs of sexual abuse. Self-loathing, addiction, depression, anxiety, difficulty in being close. Now, parents and healthcare professionals across the world are reporting that millions of girls are showing these same symptoms and they haven't been abused sexually. Many say, that it's the overtly sexualized culture that they've grown up in. Every time a man or woman, boy or girl, watches porn, they're actually strengthening the neural pathways in the brain to create the visual that this is how sex is. There are now men in their 20s who've watched so much porn that they're actually having trouble sustaining an erection. The real thing just doesn't live up to the fantasy of porn. Sex has become something in the mind. 40 now, though, thousands of men around the world are actually giving up porn to actually regain their sexual function. What porn teaches is that sex and love don't go together. It teaches that sex, high excitement, novelty, performance, and now, sadly, violence go together. And this is the thing. Sex and love have become strange bedfellows. They rarely share the same bed. This is not a moral argument. This is an argument for love. It's called making love, isn't it? How can we bring sex and love together? What got me here is that for many years, I felt like my body had closed down sexually. I just couldn't live up to this image portrayed in the media of this ever-ready, up-for-it woman. I felt like my whole womanhood was lacking, like there was something seriously and deeply wrong with me. So I went on a quest to find out what could create a sustainable, loving sexual relationship. And there were three main things that I learned. The first one, there was actually nothing wrong with my woman's body at all. That was a relief, I can tell you. And secondly, that sexually, men's bodies and women's bodies actually function very differently. And thirdly, that conventional sex, with its intensity, its tension, its stimulation, actually leaves a lot of negative consequences on the body, the mind, and the emotions for both women and for men. What I found really interesting is that the body is like magnets. We have dynamic and receptive poles. For a woman, we live from our hearts, right? We're nurturers, we're caregivers, we feed babies from our breasts. It's actually the breasts in particular 
and our heart, where this dynamic quality is generated. When a woman allows this in lovemaking and actually relaxes within herself and within her body, a beautiful vitality begins to resonate within her genitals as the receptive organ in her body. But this takes time. A woman's body opens more slowly. For a man, his dynamic quality is in his genitals already. So he's more easily ready. But he also needs more time to actually allow the shift up to his heart, which is his receptive area, where he can then connect more with his partner in love. The thing is that sex can become very genitally focused, completely missing this whole area of a, a woman's body, a, man, a man's body, the heart, the breast, the chest, the place where we actually feel and experience love. And because this is a woman's dynamic area, her body can close. And this can create a real separation between men and women. Also in conventional sex, the women, are, women and men are often striving for a goal, right? The orgasm. And sometimes women are trying to get that over with as quickly as possible. Either way, they actually focus, their attention is in the future rather than being in the present moment. And certainly, they're not really in their bodies and certainly not really being present with their partner because they're ahead of themselves. Also, our bodies are so, so sensitive and our genitals are such fine, tender organs, especially for a woman. And we subject them to a lot of friction, a lot of tension, a lot of heat in conventional sex. And with more and more stimulation, we become less sensitive. And then we try to ramp things up to create more and more sensational experiences, actually upsetting this magnetic quality within and between the bodies. The good thing is, though, that the body is so forgiving. Once we actually understand these forces within our bodies and we reorientate ourselves towards more relaxed lovemaking without forcing anything, this natural, beautiful magnetism begins to flow. The body then, the sensitivity returns and the body then responds as it was naturally designed to. The body responds to love. So if we take the time to relax more rather than creating tension, to just be in the moment rather than being ahead of ourselves, to feel in our bodies rather than being in the mind and fantasy, then love and harmony will grow for a couple. And loving couples create loving families. And loving families contribute positively to community. Changing the way we make love takes commitment. There's a lot to undo with this conditioning. And it takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. I believe, though, at these crucial and confusing times when there's so much misunderstanding around sexuality and couples are suffering, that it's a very valuable journey for men and women to take. For a start, all the problems arising from conventional sex just fall away. I've found myself to be so much more at peace within myself. I was far less emotional and reactive, and far more loving and compassionate. And also, my health improved significantly. And I was able to be so much more creative in my outside world. And you know what, about the same time that I understood this information and got to really integrate it for myself with my partner, I approached my daughter again, and she was open. I'll never forget this day. It was one of the most beautiful, sunny December days, and we lay under the pine trees at Coolum Beach, and I shared everything that I'd learned and understood 
and already had known in my body and my heart to be true. It was one of the most fulfilling days of my life as a mother. It was such a gift to both of us. And I hope that this can be a gift for generations to come. Thank you.